on May 11th and 12th, 1963, Pacifica Radio in Los Angeles presented the first Renaissance Pleasure Fair and May Market. Herewith, some brief memories of that gay event, culled from nearly six hours of live broadcasting. We hope you will excuse some small technical difficulties and that you will enjoy reliving or perhaps hearing for the first time a bit of the pageantry and ribaldry from the Pleasure Fair. Fairest of the fair. When such fair beings as you have the fairness to honor our fair with your fair presence, it is perfectly fair that you should receive good fare from the fair conductors of this fair. And indeed, it would be very unfair if you should not fare well, since it is the endeavor of those whose welfare depends upon the success of this fair to treat all who come fairly, but to treat with a special fairness those who are as fair as yourself. This is Lee Whiting broadcasting from the KPFK Pleasure Fair booth, and here is Jerry Zellinger. The Grand March begins, opening the KPFK Renaissance Pleasure Fair. The Herald has just entered the forecourt at the Maypole area on horseback, and as you can hear, the dancers, May dancers, and beautifully colored costumes dancing as they enter the fairgrounds. Tambourines twirling, beautiful dances, beautiful costumes with flowers in their ears. us with some of our colorful description is Carl Reiner. Everybody is dressed in Elizabethan costumes, uh, coming down right toward us now, playing Elizabethan, the Elizabethan beat. I think that's the beat, it's a one beat. Lovely. Uh, now how do you, this is the Elizabethan dress on this, this beautiful yellow dress, how is that described? You know more about this. Carl, let me tell everybody who I am, I'm Harvey Bennett. I can't tell you, I just haven't the slightest idea. Uh, well, it, to me, it it's looks a, it's like... It's kind of a mixture of, of 15th, 14th, and 16th, but it all seems to go together out here. And everybody's doing the version of the minuet that was done in those days. <laughs> a couple of interesting things. There's some 20th century costumes here that are modeled and styled after Elizabethan dress, and they, they fit in very nicely, actually. A, a large float is being... Or it's not a float, it's a... Uh, Delarte wagon. It's a Commedia dell'arte wagon, uh, and the players are dancing around it. There comes a tambourine lady. And um, they're doing the steps that I, the last time I saw it was in the uh, production of Romeo and Juliet, the type of dancing that is being done. Yeah. They have later on... Uh, the Lord Mayor is in front of us wearing a bright red wig, a beige and blue... We have to step back because of float oh, coming, The right? float is coming right at us and it's being dragged by young slaves. <laughs> they're about three, three to ten year old children. And here come the dancing players, the strolling players. Here comes a monk. I believe he's a monk wearing an orange fryer tuck in shades there. <laughs> and he's got, he's, concealed, he's got a concealed camera. Uh, some dancers are, are now doing a, uh, the 14th century version of the horror. Now those are recorders, so and these people play them quite well. Yes. It's an ancient instrument. It's one of the few ancient instruments that is still played today by many people. And here come the horsemen, or the horse ladies, and a donkey cart pulling a, uh, what is that? Uh, it looks like a chariot, of an old-time chariot. <laughs> and here comes a very handsome man dressed in blue on a large 17-stone horse or 17-hand horse. 
being uh, escorted by a lovely page girl. And there comes a there comes a man saying, "How are you?" Wearing a multi-festoon hat, some grape leaves. Here come some ponies with the. Uh, and somebody's yelling. That's the crier. Oh, no, here the, the call of the fair. The glove is up, and the pleasure fair is come to turn. Under the gracious auspices of our most benign and noble Majesty, Elizabeth, Queen of England, mother of the British Isles, and Queen of the High Seas, May Market is open all in its season. All the products of the Lord's bounty are here, and commerce. King, when we read of the ways of trade, oh, yes. you may partake of the wares of the makers of stone. For artists and players of great renown are here at pleasure fair. For thine own sake, beware of cut first knaves, pickpockets, charlatans, whores, unbonnets, diggers, roisterers, jackanapes. Poachers and basic craft of the great <laughs> Many knowing the whereabouts of one Robin of Sherwood or any man of his band, or do you find them frequenting pleasure there? Report them to the sheriff, who will put them in charge for a slaying of the king's deer. Oh yes, oh yes, now oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. hear the call of the fair. The club is up. And pleasure fair is come to town. Now where's the queen? <laughs> Can you hear? With the cries of long live the queen. Down below, the command in honor of her most gracious majesty. <laughs> Well, here we are back at the main stage of the KPFK Renaissance Pleasure Fair, and we have with us the Quartetto de Medici performing music by Mel Choir. The Punch and Judy show is just starting, for those of you around me, within the sight of, of my moving lips. Uh, that's right, over there, the Punch and Judy show is starting, and for those of you who are listening, come on out and see the next show, and all the other things at the fair. I've just been told that I will be absolutely clobbered if I don't get the Penny Pitchman on, and here he is. Your name is? King Moody. The King, Penny Pitch Man. King Moody, the Penny Pitch Man. <laughs> Ten Pence Pitch Man. King, you look like a 16th century gypsy. 
uh, a ragamuffin or a rapscallion <laughs> or a, something like that. Yeah. Uh, are, you, uh, are you really a pitch man here? What are you doing? Yes, we have a little uh, pitching gaming center down below, uh, a game of uh, skill and science, uh, which we call the 10 pence pitch, which is a uh, pitch for KPFK. A nice. pitch in time for a dime. <laughs> Splendid. And have people been pitching away? Oh, yes, they've been pitching away. In fact, mathematically, they're not supposed to be able to win, but they're, we've had three, uh, nine mathematical impossibilities. <laughs> Marvelous. <laughs> nine good winners. And, and more to come? Absolutely. All right. You've just Actually, heard it. it's very easy. We have everything here, in, including a Renaissance Las Vegas, friends. So do come. Meet the, not the penny pitch man, but the ten pence pitch man. Thank you, King. Thank you very much. And good luck. Here is what I, I think is probably the, the, the hardest working person on the entire, of the many, many hundreds of people who have helped so much to make this fair a reality. I'm going to turn the microphone over to David Osmond to give you the lady of the hour. David? The whole idea was Phyllis Patterson's, and I'm sure she's very sorry she ever thought of it. Oh, not in the slightest. It's so exciting, you can't believe it. I, I, you know, there's so many people who think that the Renaissance is a charming period and who are dancing through the streets. Unbeknownst to me, we have uh, 50 entertainers that I never even knew we had who just perform on the spot. People have come in costume that we didn't even know would. It's, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting to know that so many people um, like something that's a little unusual and like to participate in something that I at least think is charming. Well, after all of this planning, yeah. the spontaneity that suddenly came ah, up yeah. out of it is seems to me the yeah. most incredible thing. As you say, the costumes. Yeah. And uh, there are a, yeah. a dozen guitarists in that kind I know, of thing. I know. Well, some people just came with recorders and some people just came with costumes. It's very beautiful that people can have um, such lovely feelings toward each other, too. I haven't seen any uh, bad feelings between people here at the fair. Everybody seems to be having a marvelous time and smile. buying wares and, and saying, my, this is charming, you know? And uh, nobody looks as bored as they usually do at, uh, like, carnivals and bazaars of the usual order. This is what I had in mind. I knew it didn't have to be like that, you see. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Phyllis. Dave. Phyllis Thank Patterson, you. whose idea the KPFK Renaissance Fair in May Market was. And here to introduce our next entertainment is Jerry Zellinger. My belly is now almost full, my chin, and I cannot tell what to do. The petticoats which I wore, and likewise my apron too. Alas, they are all too short before, and I cannot tell what to do. Was ever a young maid so cross as I who said thank you to? Good deal of bringing up, but a little thing laid me down. I am a young lass of Lynn, who often said thank you to my belly is now almost to my chin, and I cannot tell. to Donna Burrow, Balladeer, here on the main stage of the KPFK Renaissance Pleasure Fair. And now, here she continues.
Donnaburro Balladeer, coming to you from the main stage of the KPFK Renaissance Pleasure Fair. This is Jerry Wally Balloon number two, back to Harv Bennett Wally Balloon number one. Gentle maid, might I sell you a papal indulgence? Oh, yes. With which I shall take away from you, absolve you from the sins and the tortures and the rigors and the purgatories of commercial radio. Commercial radio? 25 <laughs> pence, 25 pence a bargain, ma'am. Gentle maid, this is not a popish plot, I assure you. This is 25 pence which goes directly to KPFK. It saves you from the purgatories <laughs> of commercial you, radio. You. Thank, thank you, my kind maid. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen, thank you, ladies all. You are listening to a real-life drama on the fairgrounds at KPFK's <laughs> Renaissance Pleasure Fair in Maymarket. And before this beggar gets too far away... Beggar, sir, I'm, <laughs> I'm a monk of the anachronistic order. A thousand sir, pardons, O oh monk. At least. The man, uh, the man almost concealed by this monk's habit is Ron Patterson. Ron? It's not a habit, I assure you. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> and and, and as, as rumor would have it, you're related to, to the Phyllis Patterson. Yes, yeah, sometimes called the fair lady. <laughs> the very fair lady of this fair, indeed. Uh, you got a haul there. Is that all for KPFK? Yes, it is. It's my second plate. It's not enough. It's not enough? <laughs> but it's all I have. <laughs> Uh, Ron, I saw you before in in an uh, entirely different costume. Uh, orange, brilliant hues, black tights. W w how, wh what brought about this transformation? I got tired of hopping and dancing <laughs> and playing the tambourine, so I switched to a monk's garb where I might where I might within rest from all. We're not to read anything into the fact that you started the day as a, a gambling and jibing and you ended up in a monk's uh, suit. We're, we're not to take anything from that move, huh? I shall, sir, take from me the monk's habit momentarily and jump back into the jester's garb. What happened out I needed there a rest. on the second level of the fair, <laughs> Willie? <laughs> the second level? <laughs> to get serious for a moment, as, listen to the money The drop. money is dropping We're just in. standing here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you've been uh, involved. Thank you, sir. You've been. Thank you, ladies, <laughs> gentlemen, dear. Thank you. I mean, no. And if those of you at home listening haven't reached into your pockets by now, what are you doing there at home, Ron? How In many? We are. How many people would would you estimate have have uh, volunteered and have been helping you and Phyllis and the other committee people over the last few weeks? Oh, from six to eight hundred, I suppose, it, it, counting the uh, the people who've been working on the booths, uh, the potters, the uh, the tradesmen, the craftsmen, and a lot of people who have been making the wimpole hats and the uh, uh, the Robin Hood hats and the uh, jester's baubles and all of the things that have been made, especially for the fair. People have been uh, countless people. We have no idea how many people did you know meet in different homes from over the last three months. Uh, yeah, but it all came together quite beautifully. It was uh, very good. Thank you so much for talking to us, Ron. And from all of us, the subscribers, the volunteers, and everyone, many, many thanks for everything you've done to make this a success. Thank you. It's been wonderful. I mean, it really has been fun. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Papal indulgences. <laughs> Papal indulgences. And now here's Dave Osmond. Thanks, Harv. Uh, you heard some bells in the background here. They're the there they are again, and uh, in a beautiful costume with a, uh, I suppose we'd have to call it Kelly Green ribbon around her neck, Miss Kitty Peeling, and what are you doing here? Oh, sure, and didn't you know, kind sir, I am the auctioneer, and I came, maybe I thought you'd want to give something in honor of his patron, St. KPFK. I thought maybe you had something per chance, one of the buttons on your waistcoat there. Oh, you are a fine broth of a man. Do you think you could sell one of the buttons off my waistcoat I now? think maybe I could. Now, say, why I like these fairs so is because I met seven of me husbands here. Oh, did you know? The best pigs I ever got here, including me husbands. <laughs> Tell me about tell me about your auction. What are you going to auction? Well, that now I'm going around, and all the wonderful people that come to the fairs, you know, they have a heart as big as all get out. Odds bud, can you never saw such wonderful people? And I ask them, would they give me of this, and would they give me of that? And that they do. Now I'm going, you see my wheelbarrow, 
and I have, I've got my eye out for a good looking man there to pull it for me. And I'm going to go, I'm going to get pottery. I'm going to get pots too. Can you give us a sample of how you would auction off something? Oh, I would say gather around, gather around you good people I have here before you. Oh, do you see what I just got? Do you know I got this from a Frenchman who swore he got it from the, he got it from the court of King Louis. Tis a chastity belt, that it is, the old man gave me this. I'm going to auction it off, and I see there are plenty of men here that should have it, don't you think? I think so, indeed. I shall see you at the auction. You'll see me at it the auction? It starts in 20 minutes. And you'll see me here tomorrow. And if you see a good-looking man that doesn't have a woman, I've got a glint in the eye, eh? Oh, fine. God's rest to you, young gentlemen. Thank Bye-bye. you, madam. Now we're going to switch you to the main stage here at KPFK's Pleasure Fair. Jerry Zellinger will introduce our next performing group. We're at the main stage of the fair where the Pro Musica Antigua of Van Nuys is performing. And uh, here they are. Go to Bed, Sweet Muse by Robert Jones, written in 1608 from his third book of theirs. <laughs> apples or most anything else in the world, come join us at the fair. Apples, paintings, arts and crafts, recorder concerts, fifes and drums, hundreds of costumes, wonderful things for the children. Come on over. You know, a while ago, uh, in conversation with one of the people here, uh, we had mentioned that uh, someone had come up and, and uh, I, w- I want to find the right word. I started to say proposition, that's not the word I want. The word is, uh, I was uh, solicited to buy a skeleton key for a chastity belt. Now this is one of the many more unusual uh, vendors uh, wending their way through the fairgrounds. We have finally cornered her and her name is Sandra Lee Gross. Sandra, hi. Hello. Now, would you please tell our listeners exactly what it is you're selling in this lovely costume and Well, that's exactly what it is, is a skeleton key for chastity belts. I thought it would be a commercial item for a (laughs) non-commercial station to make money. And uh, I um, think that's a wonderful idea. And how did you get into this racket? (laughs) (laughs) It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Absolutely right. That upsets me. (laughs) What what are the reactions you've had from the obviously dismayed people that you've found here? I feel like saying... Smile, you're on candid camera, <laughs> for half of them. Smile, you're on KPFK. Oh, yes, KPFK. And how is, how's business been? Very good. I'm almost sold out. I'll have to be sewing away all this evening. <laughs> Sandra, thank you very much. Continued luck with this wonderful uh, business. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the fair. What's this? That's our motto. Why don't you read it? Uh, for bad nights and good night. Right, and the audience will decide where the K and the N <laughs> belong in each word. Thank you very much, Sandra. David Osmond has someone uh, here, oh, someone, virtually the Grand Marshal of this fair. <laughs> David, why don't you introduce him? There's no question about the Grand Marshaldom of Preston Hibbert, who is virtually responsible for the actual buildings and the uh, the entire thing. Why don't you tell the audience what was here two weeks ago? Oh, actually nothing but a, but a wonderful little uh, ranch for, uh, for um, 
uh, school for children and uh, Haskell's Rascals. And uh, it's a tr uh, two weeks, so uh, actually it was more than two weeks ago that we started. I would say about a month ago, but then the people, all the volunteer help started coming about three weeks ago, and we really, isn't it the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life? Well, it's fantastic, and there must be, what, 40 or 50 booths? Oh, no, there's 60. Six, 60, 60 yes, booths. yes, 60, and they're the greatest things I've ever seen in my life in these booths, these wonderful, wonderful exhibits was, they, was uh, they're the having. Was the decoration and uh, all the appointments, the uh, banners and the whole thing, how, how was this actually handled? Well, I stood out, and as the people built, I says, now raise the board a little bit higher and put a <laughs> scallop there and throw some ribbon over here. Actually, we didn't use a des uh, design because we couldn't and get it in this condition. You, if, you, if you see all of the different down below, anyway, those those structures going off into the air. You you you, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, by it's the a stages. perspective yes. kind of kind of thing. I couldn't draw this. I couldn't and get it to look like anything uh, on paper. So we had to do it by the whole thing just with our, with our eyes. Well, I know the answer to my last question, but I want you to give it. How authentic is the fair? As authentic as it, uh, we went to the library and got a lot of different uh, pictures on on levels and things uh, uh, what was the fair what was that um oh my gosh i forgot the name of it well in any case the uh the, this fair is patterned after an actual yeah fair of to the an time. extent yes it is because uh uh some of their things that they had in uh, were unsafe and we had to to <laughs> eliminate uh, the standing people on little pegs and uh, there's some the booze are not s suspended on little pegs like they did in there those days but they have them going off at an angle, and and uh, this thrilled me. And I would build a booth, and then I'd jump up and down and <laughs> dance around. Wonderful Rome um, helped me. Uh, he, uh, what's Rome's last name? Ron Coney. Ron Coney. Uh, when we first started, we we stood out and we build a booth and look at this design going off in this strange shape and these scallops and we would dance around and yell people thought we were stark raving mad because was things were falling we did the whole thing with scrap lumber you know well it's it's a fantastic the whole job thing, there, I, th I, I do believe we spent approximately uh, oh, I think hundred and fifty dollars to build the whole thing Come that's on. that's incredible I know you have some stage managing yes, to go I do. off I have and to do run. So, Preston Hibbert, who's been going under the name of Redbeard, because that's what he has, an incredible golden costume with a great medal on it. Thank you so much you. for the fair and for the interview, oh, these too. wonderful people. There are so <laughs> many of them. They're wonderful. Thank you. And now, back to Harf. I see over there our apple-selling girl who was on before. In fact, if you listen carefully, you can hear her making her entrance. That's as nice an entrance as ever I've heard. How's the apple business? Oh, apples are wonderful. Oranges didn't do so well, but apples are wonderful. They're cold <laughs> and juicy. What is your name? My name is Judith Corey. Judy, you've been doing a wonderful job. Thank you. It seems to me you've sold virtually everybody at least one apple or orange, including me. At least one. Yeah. What are some of the things you've, you've seen? You've pretty well covered all the ground here today. Yes. Oh, there's been some wonderful dancing, and there's so many beautiful things in the booths. And people seem to be having a wonderful time out here. You're going to be here tomorrow? Yes, I'll be leading the people who will be dancing behind the Queen's retinue at 12, the call of the fair. Oh, that's wonderful. And there's another grand parade uh, at 12? At 12 noon. Fine. I hope everyone will come down to see you, buy of your apples. Oh, thank you, sir. You're kind. See your lovely continents. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Judy. Bye. Bye-bye. Shade, an echo 
We're going to present now Plenty of Elante with the Piccolo Playmakers. And here comes their grand march to the wagon stage. The time is 6.15 and all's well. Hear ye, hear ye. Here's the Pacifica Crier with tonight's edition of the Pacifica Omens, Portents, and News. Mr. Clean. Good evening. A subcommittee of the House of Lords today launched an investigation into the contract awarded three months ago to Jerome Shore Grommet Fabricators for 87,384 grommets to be used in the sales of Her Majesty's fleet. Shore, replying to questions of propriety in this venture, stated that the grommets fabricated by his corporation are stronger, rounder, and longer lasting than those made by the competing concern, Dynamic Grommets General. Shore told the Lords that his TFX model grommet cost only the 14th part of a groat. Dynamic Grommets General's bid amounted to 16 grommets per groat. Shore claimed his grommet, though less expensive, more adequately suited the specifications of the contract. Remember, he said, inferior grommets could disastrously weaken our entire defense posture vis-a-vis -vis the international heretical Spanish conspiracy. Lord Inniskilling told reporters, balderdash. In other developments, Puritan agitation broke out in Leeds today. The Reverend William Penn, leader of the East Middlesex Christian Leadership Conference, was arrested for leading a sit-in demonstration at Leeds Cathedral. Mastiffs were set to the pickets who bore signs reading, We shall not be removed, and ban the longbow. A Scotland Yard official says, You can tell they are skilled Spanish agitators by the way they wear their hair. And finally, the trial for disorderly conduct of a young, self-styled poet began today in Magistrates Court, Marylebone High Street. Upon hearing William Shakespeare's alleged occupation, Judge Horatio Falstaff admonished the plaintiff to get a job. Shakespeare was rearrested after today's session for peddling copies of his book Venus and Adonis, which has been termed obscene by parliamentary proclamation. At the second arraignment, Judge Falstaff said, I may not know art, but I know filth when I see it. That's the news from here at the site of the Renaissance Fair. Good night. That's all the news you're going to get. Pacifica's Omens, Portents, and News were prepared from the wires of the Associated Press and a slow packet boat from New Spain. The news was reported by John Oliger. Ladies and gentlemen, as the last of many of our spectacular events at the KPFK Pleasure Fair, <laughs> we are going to bring you, I think, probably the most exciting event of all. It's really an event in the vast tradition of sports through the years. 
I am standing in front of two knights in armor. Uh, the knights are about three feet high. The horses that they ride are attached to them, but you really... We have the neo-Renaissance singers who are performing in the background here on the main stage at the Pleasure Fair. You've been listening to The Fairest of the Fair. Selections from live broadcasting recorded May 11th and 12th at KPFK's Renaissance Pleasure Fair and May Market. Commentary and interviews by Harv Bennett, Jack Hirschman, and KPFK staff members Jerry Zellinger, David Osman, and Lee Whiting. Technical work by Mike Dayton, Mark Okrand, and Paul Stein. Newscast by John Oliger and produced by Fred Haynes. The Call of the Fair provided by Mike Tiger. Floor Manager, Jane Bennett. This program produced and edited by Dave Osman with the technical assistance of Mike Dayton.